You're listening to the Major Pod Network, the only place where your favorite toy store, card shop, arcade, theme park, and arena are all on the same block. Scratch that major itch. My friends over at Roosevelt's, they make the most incredible shirts. And and they they have everything from Disney to The Office to Jurassic Park, WWE, and everything pop culture. Nickelodeon, Nicktoons. My son and I fight over the shirts that we get shipped to us. Use promo code SWOGGLE. Save 20% off any order from button ups to hoodies to activewear, everything. Guys, go to Roosevelt's.com. R S V L T S.com. Use promo code SWOGGLE. Save yourself 20% on everything. R S V L T S. Dot com. <coughs> We're off to a good start already. <laughs> Guys, welcome to another episode of Going Postal. I'm Dylan. Always working. Always traveling. This week, always sneezing. Ooh. Just always sneezing. I love a good sneeze. The pasta cough is in full effect, as we say. But, but I, it's not going to let me stop me. Let me stop me. Guys, this is going postal. Here's George. Uh, yeah, that's that's me. I'm George. I am uh, the producer. Dylan's like virtual riding buddy. Sometimes we see each other We've in never person. never ridden together. I know. It's a virtual thing. I know. But I know that it drives you nuts, so I like to say it. Uh, and today on Going Postal, we are talking all things Jericho Cruise. George, uh, before you Dylan- go any further, we have to remind these fine folks that no. Going Postal is provided to you by the wonderful, wonderful people over of, at the Roosevelt's brand. Guys, just dropping as you listen to this or very soon after is the spring collection. Ooh. I got my eyes on some of the spring collection. It might be my favorite collection. Like that's not character. And I, our friends over at Roosevelt's have a promo code for you. You can save 20% on your whole order. It's not a one-time use code either. It's not a just for regular priced shirts code anything sale items anything guys make sure to check out their accessories section i just found out about their accessories section i have bucket hats on the way that are incredible rose i'm gonna go from the backwards hat gang to the bucket hat gang i'm gonna be a bucket hat guy only for days at the pool where i can embarrass where i can embarrass my kid now, wait, can I ask you an honest question? Because this is something that I sent to um, to Johnny Clash, my my co-host over at the Game Marks podcast. We want to check Caruse! Out there. He also goes by that name on this podcast. Um, wait, what's, that, what's that social security number of his? Uh, there's a one. Okay. Or we'll get it. What are these doing? Like I was talking about before, they have just like their collections that are very okay as well. Guys, these are awesome. They're so breathable. I call them the perfect golf shirt, and they have their own golf brand as well. Check Dylan them out. Dylan big golf guy. You? No, Dylan Postel, big golf guy. Dylan Postel, big golf guy. Just paid for my season pass at the there local course. Got to get, get those clubs cleaned. It's maybe happy. that's a future episode. Maybe, maybe we talk about Dylan's... Uh, Dylan on the green? 
Dylan, oh, I like this name of the episode. I really have fallen in love with golf um, a lot the last few years, especially. But that's for a future episode. Hell yes. Uh, so today, like I said, we are talking all things Jericho Cruise. Um, but you know what? I'm going to interrupt myself there again because we also got to talk about the follow from the last episode. You sat down with one of your best friends. Yeah. The most professional wrestler, one Brian Myers. And uh, what's that thing that you say when you sit down with your friends? It's just what? It's two, two what? <laughs> two pals yucking it up. And that is the definition two, two, of that episode. Absolutely. Uh, bar none, the most talked about story coming out of this that I've seen on social media is uh, the story of you staying at Brian's parents' house uh, and interacting with his mom, asking for a glass of water. In my underpants. So that was like. <laughs> Weimer, who I've now known for almost 20 years, has known me very, very well. We've been best friends forever uh, and then gotten to know Brian, too. And he, he knows a lot about our relationship because I have never heard that story ever. And it made me laugh so hard. I And I, I forget. I knew I like I remembered it. And it's one of those stories I always remember staying over there and just surrounded by these weird like baby toys. And it was just odd. And then I always kind of like, it's like a forgotten memory, like in Inside Out, when sadness takes a memory out of the of the core memory bank, and you start to forget it for a bit. I always forget the greeting of in the underpants, and just how weird, like how weird that must have been for his mother. Like, yeah, here's a little guy that just comes up in his underpants that I've that he, she's never met before. But it sounded like she handled it like a champ. She was the best. She still is the best. She is the absolute best. Uh, yeah, that was that was definitely the most talked about moment from the Brian Myers interview. Uh, people just seem to like it because, again, it was just two buddies. Not even just like it, it didn't come off as storytelling. It just came off as, hey, here's two guys in a car together kind of thing. Yeah, it was it was. Uh, the, the the two pals yucking it up is just the the perfect definition. It's two friends, very comfortable talking to each other. It wasn't like a forced interview. It literally was just the two of you guys hanging out, having a good time. Which that it was the same thing with Ethan Page, and who knows who's gonna be next? We've the, got some big names coming down the pike. The pike. The other, pike, the other thing. To say. Yeah, down the pike. The other thing that people were talking about was the fact that for fifty percent of the interview, my camera wasn't there. Yep. Because Did you address that early on, it's right, right in did. the intro, but, you're just like, guys. But we, uh, Dylan Postel, still not good with technology. Not good with technology to this day. Now, uh, there's one other thing that we got to talk about uh, here. If you wouldn't mind holding up, uh, I believe it's your right arm, could be your left arm, to show your new tattoo for the people watching. Cow chicken nugget. It freaking happened. It happened. Guys, uh, I don't know, man. It's uh, we could do a whole episode on just my shitty tattoos. Uh, That's on the list, and I, it doesn't say shitty tattoos. It just says Dylan's <laughs> tattoos. Um, but that well, is an episode where tattoos. we break down where we break um, down all your tattoos because, uh, especially with you know all the talk about figures nowadays and all the deco hits that happen, you so, are getting figures and. You have quite a bit of tattoos, so that's a lot of deco hits. So I've always like it, it became a thing, and I don't know how, but I always like I have my family arm, I have my friend arm, I have my Muppet leg, and then my random leg. And it just like came together that way. And it was never planned that way from the beginning. Uh, but it just started out and I was like, nope, now I have to dedicate. So now I will not get anything on my left arm. That doesn't have to do, and I'm not going to get into this too far because I wanted to save it for the tattoo episode. But I needed the cow chicken nugget logo. Uh, it was brought up. Fantastic. It was brought up on Twitch, and I was like, you know what? Hell with it. I'm going to do it. And uh, I didn't tell Landon about it, and it took me burning. It was like four days later, and it took me burning my arm on the stove. Oh. Uh, and then going, ah, shit. And then I'm going, what's that? I go, it's a burn. He goes, no, what is that? I go, I burned myself. 
<laughs> he goes, you got it, didn't you? I said, I got it. He goes, let's see. And he was so happy. <laughs> he was so happy about it. Um, it's just next, man, you're gonna get a tattoo of a pair of Jordans for him, right? That's the next tattoo. Not, that's not happening. <laughs> he sent me and his mother an eBay link this morning as I was flying home. An eBay link for a pair that he wants, and I just don't. I don't even respond anymore. I just don't even respond. I said to him the other day, I said, "Hey, man, you need like a pair of regular, as I call them, shit kickers. Like, is that is that a term that you use?" Um, yeah it's like yeah. a like a like a beater pair of shoes that you just don't care like what happens to him yeah because he doesn't need to muff up his uh, his jordans all the time yeah my my go-to is always like converse or some kind of like like flat top shoe just like some kind of canvas style like yeah, it's gonna take him and go get him a pair of under armors i got a 50 percent off uh uh under makes a comfortable at, shoe. At the local at the local shoe store rogan shoes yeah. shout out we know you're listening not not a sponsor. Could be a sponsor. Reach out to us. in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Let's talk about some unboxings that are coming over to the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Dylan Postel. YouTube.com slash Dylan Postel. If you are listening to this and you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, you're missing out on not only the video version of this for absolutely free and the video, video version of every uh, small talk that I've ever done. Um, Dylan just held up his arm to show you the cow chicken nugget tattoo. If you're not watching the video version, you don't see. see it. I don't think I posted it online. Yes, I did post it on my socials because I'm a social media well, guy now. You can go there too. Um, but on there, we're also doing some really, really fun unboxings where it's literally just Landon telling me how action figures work and how why some thing some figures have certain parts to them and why some don't. Uh, he always has to tell me about butterfly joints, but this week we are uploading the, uh, AEW announcer, the three from ringside collectibles, Tony Schiavone, Jim Ross and Excalibur that Landon will be adding to his figure fed. And he finally will have announcers and also ringside collectibles sent us a huge mystery box full of figures. And in that, there's a big giveaway at the end of that video. You, all you got to do, George will explain now. All you got to do is go to YouTube.com slash Dylan Postle and watch the video. That's all you have to watch do. the video, that's how you know how to enter to win. And there's a lot. Not only can you watch that. I'm, looking, I'm literally looking at the stack right now. One, two, three, four. There's five items in the stack that we're giving away so they for break free. down that entire for box free. that ringside sent them and uh you can not only see what you could be winning but you can also find the rules and uh you know it may have something to do with this podcast it definitely has something to do with this podcast and um it's it's Rate very us five stars that's Rate it us. leave a review five stars uh you could go watch the video still so you can go see what you could win, but that's all you got to do. Leave us your name. Leave us a five-star review. Apple podcast. That is the way to enter. And then Dylan, the man himself will be putting those names into the spinny wheel that he uses on his Twitch channel all the time, drawing the names and you could win yourself a nice figure courtesy of ringside collectibles. Now, Dylan, I have a question for you. Yes. You can go over to ringside collectibles.com right now and use promo code swoggle and save yourself 10% off your entire order. You are a mind reader. Thank you so much for giving me that information. I'm plug extraordinaire. Now, with that done, are you ready to uh, get into this week's topic? Let's go. Mad Cat Beard Care, they are the absolute best. They make my beard feel soft, silky, smooth, not only that, they've been a one-man show since 2019. Mad Cat Beard Care uses a portion of sales to care for local stray cats, cover their medical bills, find safe spaces, and forever homes. Their products are made to order with vitamins and all-natural oils 
that promote strong, healthy hair and moisturize your skin as well. Mad Cat Beard Care has exclusive scents for myself as well as other wrestlers such as a childhood favorite of mine, Delirious. Ring of Honor legend with his lime and French vanilla scent that makes my beard smell and feel amazing. And of course, make sure to try my exclusive scent swaggled with nuts of lavender and sage. And guys, make sure to use promo code SWAGGLED to save 15% on your whole order at madcatbeardcare.com. And remember, the Mad Cat makes a happy beard. All right. We are talking all things <laughs> Jericho Cruise. And honestly, if you've watched the video diary that Dylan posted, the first thing that we got to start off with talking about here is that Dylan, not a cruise guy. I, I, I've never been on a cruise. Um, let's, all, let's hear all about it. We've always talked about going on, on a Disney cruise. Uh, and this cemented the fact that Landon and I will definitely be going on a Disney cruise. Um, I didn't know what to expect. And then I didn't know what to expect uh, with thousands of wrestling fans and being on a boat. Um, uh, would I get seasick? I bought the little patches just in case. Um, I, I, I truly didn't know what to expect. And it started off real shaky. When you board a cruise, you get, you go through like, and you can see all this on the video diary. So it's, it's going to be kind of talked about on there. I really, really enjoyed that video diary too. Uh, it, it was, was very good. It's a it good was, watch. It was a really, really fun one to film. And I've actually, it was one of the few I've actually watched. Um, but it, uh, you go through this like glass loading area. Okay. Onto the cruise, essentially like think about the TSA line, but glass on the sides instead of like the little stanchions. How would you spell that? S T A N C T I O N S. St stations. Stanchions. What do you call those rope things? Those are stanchions. S T A N C T I O N S. You're so close. S T A N C H I O N. That doesn't make any sense. It's not oh, I guess it's kind of. A you didn't know that word. What did you call the rope things? A rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh god dang <laughs> oh, there's, rope. there's stanchions well instead of stanchions it's just like glass windows and i felt okay. real claustrophobic i don't get claustrophobic i felt real claustrophobic and i was not like i was boarding i started to like freeze and i didn't like it at all and Did it, anyone else uh, say that they had any experience like that? Nope. At least they didn't tell uh, me. I was saying maybe that's not something that people like. If Brian was like suddenly claustrophobic. Oh, no, Brian. Not gonna be Brian's like, a fake tough guy. Brian would no, be like three. I days can't later. imagine that you're going to want to admit to like your your group of close friends. Like if, oh, if I Mark or Brian it. or Mark I, were claustrophobic, I, had, I admitted because Liz, he, Liz, and I boarded all together, and I fully admitted that I did not like it. I, I, I. Nope, I didn't like it. And I admitted it. I don't care anymore. I'm like, yeah. Uh, but then, like, once we got on the boat and when we were exploring, I was in heaven. I loved it, man. I, oh, I, 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 I just loved every bit of the, this this cruise. It was top to bottom one of the coolest experiences I've ever been able to be a part of in wrestling. Just so much fun. And like, if you haven't been on a cruise, if if you got the cash stowed away, you got to do it. You got to. I got it. I've never <laughs> been. I've never been. Do you feel like you're on? Like, do you feel the swaying of the boat? Yeah. You, know, so, you got some choppy weather there along the yeah, way? Yeah, the, the second and third day. So it was a four-day cruise. 
the second and third day, it was extremely choppy, extremely, extremely choppy. Uh, everyone was like pinballing. I keep saying everyone was pinballing in the hallway back and forth and back and forth. And like, even me, I was like, I didn't get seasick at all. Uh, but it was rough. Like, there was a time where I was waiting for the elevator and one of the guys, and he might've been a little uh, inebriated as well. He went okay. and there were stairs. You could take the stairs like a peasant or you could take the elevator like a, like a real human. Um, <laughs> if there's an elevator, you shouldn't be taking stairs. Let's be it's honest. Just, I've never heard that. Like, oh, if you take stairs, you're a peasant. Like, it's just it's such a, an extreme take there. <laughs> it's like the days of the Titanic. Or you could just okay. Who did, if there's an elevator, you don't take stairs. Don't tell but me how you many have... floors you're going up. If I'm going up a floor and I gotta wait for an elevator for the amount of time that I would wait for an elevator, I just walk up the one flight of stairs. Nope. So I was this guy coming down the stairs, and every uh, set of stairs was eight steps. Okay. Don't know how I remember that, but I'm impressed. He took one step. And the boat swayed, and he went from step seven to the bottom landing in one motion, and then one more like vault forward and into the wall where the elevator buttons were, and just went wham, gets up and starts walking down the next set of steps. I go, I thought I saw someone die. Like, I, he <sighs> fell. It was like someone threw him off the stairs. He hit the wall, bang, and it was almost like as if the rebound off the wall sent him in motion back down the next set of stairs. But he just got up Jesus. and started walking. I go, I, I like I say, I thought I saw someone like take their last steps. It was uh, he hit the wall so hard, and I was the only one around me. Like, anyone gonna help this guy? No one's around. Okay. Man, it was, there was walking the hallways and seeing the poor, like, uh, housekeeping staff hold their carts, like, while they're pushing them, but holding them so tight so they wouldn't just, it was, it was weird, man. Just, it was very, very weird. It's a weird feeling. Um, you got to see concerts too. You got to see uh, Platinum Max. I got to see Mickey James in concert and Platinum Max. I got to see Fozzie, I think, 19,003 times. Uh, I got to see Quiet Riot. Um, it, it, yeah, like overall, it was such a cool concept because there was always something to do, whether it be the concerts, the entertainment at night, the wrestling shows, uh, live Q and A's and games or signings. There was something to do every at all times. I, I didn't, I spent like a half hour in the pool because I was just doing things. A lot of the time I was in the casino, which we'll get to bright lights. Yep, That's on the list. Bright uh, lights. But there was just, I realized when I left the boat, I saw the map of the ship and I go, I was at five restaurants and there was still like eight. I didn't even see. There was a whole basketball court up on the top deck. There was a part where you could just hit golf balls into a net on the top deck. Dylan, a yeah. big golf guy. If I would have known that I might've taken a couple swings just to say I did, but there was just, there's so much to do so much. And uh, man, it was, it was, it was awesome. Look, I can't speak highly enough about the whole, situation that's awesome i'm glad that you had a good time for your uh for your first experience but there are a couple of elephants that we need to address in the room one of them is brad williams we're friends now i know it, lo it looked like it was a little bit of a roller coaster of emotions going on there between you guys break it down what happened uh he brad so brad and i Brad and I have become friends and we became like buddies through Twitter before ever meeting. Like 
we were pals before ever meeting. And then he did a show in Appleton and I went to see it. And that was like the first time we've ever met like two years later after we started talking. And it was like, it was awesome. Like he's just, he's just turned into such a good buddy of mine and he's uh he's just a good dude. And when this, when the cruise was, when we were, when I was booked on the cruise two years ago now, I was originally announced and it was going to be me versus Brad Williams in a match. And I was like, hyped. Oh. I was pumped. I was like, man, this is going to be great. I, I can get him through one. If there's, if there's anything I can do is get through a four minute midget haha bullshit thing with Brad Williams. I can do that for sure on a cruise. Um, but it was, it was, uh, I was so glad to be able to be around him and like hang out. And then it was constant. It was constant every day. When are you guys going to fight? When are you guys going to fight? When are you guys going to fight? And it was like, we got to do something. We have to do something. And I texted Jericho. I go, Hey, can we wrestle? And he goes, Brad can't wrestle. I said, Chris, I can get him through a match. I said, you told me I was wrestling him. You didn't think about, Hey, he can't, he's not trained when you booked this. Uh, so then we ended up doing the idea that happened in the, the Matt Cardona and flip Gordon match. And man, it was a blast. It was such a blast because it was like, Every comedy, every stand up show he did, he would just shit on me. And every interview on the cruise he did, he would just shit on me. And I said nothing, literally nothing. And there were so many times where, like, man, it was funny. There was a time right after he did his first comedy show, later that night, like an hour later, uh, there's a bunch of fans in the elevator. The ele I'm, I'm waiting for the elevator because I didn't want to take the stairs like a peasant. And I'm waiting for the elevator and there's a bunch of there's people waiting for the elevator with me. And then the elevator doors open and Brad's the only one in the elevator Ooh. and he was getting off. And it was like this. Oh, fuck. And like people were like, oh, it's happening. It's going to happen. And but man, it, it was just a fun, like three days of build up and uh, getting to see his comedy show every night was awesome. and. I find his comedy incredible because it's very relatable for me. And I, I know he's very, very funny. He's, he's, he's hilarious, but it was to see like Hawkins and, and Matt and Mark and them laugh at his stand up too was like, Oh man, this is great. My buddies. And then they like, they adopted the kid. <laughs> they like, no, I'm the midget of the group. You guys like me. Like we'd be it's a training training. for the younger model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They found a new girlfriend for the week. And I I would come down to catering and he would be like sitting with him yucking it up. I go, guys, I'm the yuck yuck guy. Well, wait a second. Yeah. You're the younger model. He's he's oh yeah, he is older than me. Brad, yeah, Brad's thirty nine as we were recording this. Well, so you're the younger model. Uh, damn right I am. Just look at me. Uh, but yeah, it was maybe not uh, right now. You're a little under the weather. <laughs> I'm so sick, George. <laughs> this is going to be the most dry episode on my end. You're ever. you're a champ for for I don't pull no, through I, this, no, man. I I I don't know. I just know that if I start laughing, it's going to create a cough attack. And so I can feel my chest just saying, no, don't laugh. What about anger? Is, is, <laughs> if we get... Both the cough! <clears throat> when Anger's we, gonna if we get out. to the hot tag, is that going to be, is that gonna be the case? Feel, we skip I'm the hot tag this lung, week? I'm going to feel my lungs expand out of madness, and then I'm going to start coughing. Oh! Um, oh no! You know what's gonna happen? Your your lungs are gonna get so fired up with rage, Real it's gonna loosen chest. up Real all the chest. stuff, and everything's gonna come out. It's gonna be great. That's gonna loosen you. It's gonna clear you right out. Let me tell you. Hey, let me tell you this, George. I bought sugar. I'm afraid of what's gonna follow me saying clear you right out. When you're like, let me tell you something. That reminds me of something. It is. I oh, bought sugar-free cough drops because you know I'm I'm real worried about my figure. Sugar-free cough drops and my bad belly do not mix well, George. 
Yeah, fake sugar and bad bellies. That's like a common. It was I'm surprised you haven't experienced that before. Well, I have, but I just blame it on my bad belly. Oh no, fake sugars. That's that's a big no no. This is it was awful, and I thought it was just because my my I was sick. No, I just stopped my I just stopped my my sugar free cough drops, and I was okay. Man, they were destroying me. Well, I can't believe I'm saying this. That's actually kind of a good segue. How was the food on the cruise? I fell in love with prosciutto. I no prosciutto featured in the in the video diary. Tons of pigs in a blanket, though. I fell in love with prosciutto so much so that the wonderfully beautiful Liz Myers said to me, "You're having that again." And I looked her in the eye and I said, if there's prosciutto here, I will have it. George, I had prosciutto in every meal, but I just fell in love the first day. I saw the cold cuts there and I go, ah, and then I guess you're not supposed to eat it with your hands. Like you're supposed to eat it with a fork. It's a lunch meat. It's a lunch meat. You should eat it with your hands. So I would take a. I would take. It's a perceived as like a high end lunch meat. Like it's, it's, like, it's a high end hands, George. I, it's, listen, I don't make the rules, Dylan. I'm the, an etiquette coach. George Feast is not. Well, I would. I would get some with the tongs. I wouldn't just take it off the buffet with my hands. I put it on the thing, and I would roll it up in like little, like each slice into a little, uh, little meat roll, yep. and I just pop it in. And Liz That's is going, best. "You're just eating it with your hands." I go, "Yeah." What he, was, he goes, oh, have you never had it? I said, I love it. And I ate it. That was the first day. I ate it at least three times a day, every day. So wait, that was your first time having it? Or no. you just rediscovered how much you love it? I didn't know I loved prosciutto. I love prosciutto. Okay. Are you a fan? Of, and I'm sure that you're going to be like, no, it's called this. But are you a fan of the green melon? Honeydew. Yes. Disgusting. I think I've had it once in my life because I was eating a, uh, like a, 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 a fruit cup, like a, like a gas station yes. melon cup. But I got the, the green one and it was just disgusting. Did not like it. Uh, a big, a big thing. Uh, <laughs> That a lot of people do what with the prosciutto is that they do honey, like they do the melon wrapped around or prosciutto wrapped around the honeydew. That doesn't sound good. A little, sweet sound good. a little sweet and salty combination. It doesn't sound good whatsoever. But if it has prosciutto involved, I mean, there's a good chance I'll try that. I, say, I guess uh, you got to kind of like honeydew to get to get into it. We we were talking about it earlier, and the first night they had like this welcome party for the the talent booked on the cruise. And we we're just hanging out, and uh, this nice, this nice gal waitress comes by with a tray, and I think I fell in love that night, not with the waitress gal, which she had on the tray. I love pigs in a blanket, George. These were like woolly mammoths in a blanket. These were full hot dogs, like okay. jumbo hot dogs in blankets i saw them and i go is that a pig in a blanket and hawk says i don't know sure and every time she walked around that welcome party alone i was there for maybe 90 minutes that welcome party alone i think i had five of them and then we had a signing the next morning at 10 a.m and there was a guy with them again and i was so happy I was so happy about these pigs in a blanket. It made that between that and the prosciutto. I was just, I was, I was on another level with the food. I didn't have a bad meal. I didn't have one bad meal. Hey, I could have lived, I could have lived just on that though. On the prosciutto and the pigs in a blanket. I could have lived on. I, that's texted, a good spot to be on when you're, when you're uh, out at sea to know you still got good food. That's a good spot to be in. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I was loving the food. We had, we had, uh, uh, what's it called? Hibachi. 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 Yeah. We had hibachi the last night. We had a nice family dinner. Um, 
And then we had like our, our, our catered room and that was great. And we had a buffet there. I went to the buffet once. It was great, man. I, I like I say, I did not have a bad meal. Did not have That's one great. bad meal. Well, so we, we kind of jumped off the topic of Brad Williams, but we're going to bring it back to Brad right now because the next thing that I have in the notes is uh, I wanted to ask you and the people I'm sure at home want to know, what was it like to be in a wrestling ring on a cruise ship? So I guess, I don't know if this is true. I guess they had something underneath the ring that kept it level. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I'm that's sure that kept, technology exists, whether or not it was actually on the cruise that's what ship. I kept, is that's story, what I kept but. hearing. Um, is that they had that. Now, I I was in the ring for all of 15 seconds. So I, I don't know. I, it didn't affect me that much. I was just imagining like doing a full match on some of those really, really, they only canceled one show because of the okay. weather the second night um, because of the waves and the rain. But like even that, even the third afternoon, there was some rain and they still had the show. It was, it was crazy, man. But I, I, I these guys were flying in some of the matches and it was, it was pretty rocky. But I, I yes, yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't seeing it was unbelievable. Seeing a ring on a boat, especially it was like a cool visual for sure. Yeah, if you go back and watch the the video diary, there's the the day where it's just like it's just crap weather, and I go out on the deck, and there's no one out there, and just this ring. It's very weird. It was like eerie. It was very very eerie and weird. Um. How was the stunner? Great. I, I immediately was like, Brad can do a spear and a stunner. I know for sure. I can take both for sure. This would be great. So Hell of a I, bump on that stunner. I mean, it's just, it's just what I do, George. I take, I, I put, I got, I got to put the kid over, you know, we've, we've said it before. You can sell the shit out of anything. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> Because the second day they didn't have the stage because of the rain. So people would just like walk through the crowd. And I was like, guys, if we do that, that's fine. But I need steps to get into the ring. And thank God they still had steps anyways. But then they're like, no, you guys can use the stage. I was like, oh, thank God. Okay. All right. Okay. I Because it happens like at least once a month. Where it's a show I'm on where there's no ring steps last night where there's no ring steps. And then I have to like steal a fan's chair to get in the ring. So I've had fans literally, I, I, I ask them for their chair and they just go like, they reach and try to like pick me up. No, no, I just want your goddamn chair. Like, I don't want you to help me. Also, you can't pick me up. I don't get, I, I, I don't get why people would think that that's okay. So let's talk about, I want to save bright lights casino for the end. Uh, let's talk about your room and then, uh, your room upgrade there. Hello. Hello. My oh. Oh. <laughs> no. There he is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the one. Landon Pasto. We're talking about the cruise Oh, that I didn't bring you on. Yeah. That's all you got. What are you doing? Are you, are you mad? That your dad did not take you on the cruise of Jericho. Mm -hmm. He's mad because he didn't get to hang out with AEW guys. Yes. That's well, the main reason. That, that, that was it. And I, and he, I like, I, I FaceTimed him as we were pulling off a port and Fozzie was playing. He goes, have they played Judas yet? I said, you know, they will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the they sixth did. Sixth time I'm hearing it. <laughs> they, 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 they did. And people love it, man. It was, that was another thing. Like, they played Judas every night, every night, but the people sang it so loud every time. It was great. Man, oh, man. That is uh, I, uh, wait, I want live, uh, live feedback from Landon. What do you think of the cow chicken nugget tattoo? Lean That's into great. the mic. Tell the people what you think. It's perfect. I didn't realize it for <laughs> so long. And then I would just look on it and he tried hiding it. <laughs> So he uh, he had posted about it 
in uh in the the going postal discord he had posted about it on twitter he texted me and he just goes i'm not telling him i'm not, I'm not <laughs> gonna tell day. him until it he was, notices it, it three days yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, he's like, we're gonna play the game. We're gonna we're gonna see how long it takes. And people were like and asking in the Discord. It had to have happened already. I said, no, it, it's been. Well, I mean, do you just go around looking at people's forums? Landon, I'm not. And it's also it's not like you I got mean, you know it wasn't like it was like a full chess piece. It's it's a little yeah tattoo on I have your arm, arm that already has. T- I have little. It takes up a good amount of my forearm. No, but I'm saying it's a it, in in scale of the other tattoos that you have on your arm. It's smaller in comparison. It's on a goddamn your arm that cow has chicken t- nugget, George. On your, on your like, arm that already has yeah, tattoos yeah, on it, though. Knuckle tats. Cow. Cow. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Landon uh, Postal running of the episode. Every episode uh, he does this shit. He does this because he knows we're recording. He can hear me recording. And he, he wasn't even at the house. His mom just brought him by to, to pick some stuff up. We got to we gotta just get him his own setup. He's got to have his own room with his own setup and stuff. So no, that way he, he already just, thinks he needs his own Twitcher. He, he could just, hey, he could just <clears throat> pop in and out whenever he wants. He's oh, like, be, you know, I heard yeah, you guys I, talking about this. So I'm going to join in and, and chime in and, and talk about this. And then he could just, you know, leave when he's done. And then when he hears something else that he wants to talk about, he can that's exactly back in. what I, That's exactly what I want. That would be great. That's. I that that's ratings. That's money for the podcast, Dylan. It'd be like him um, giving like the news of the week, and it's just him burying me and asking for shoes and money. When we I when think- we <laughs> I think I think uh when we have steady unboxings on the YouTube channel, that's gonna be Landon's run in each week. He could tell everyone what what you guys unboxed and and that'd be great. Actually, out. to be honest, that'd be a, that's a, that's a that's a heck of an idea. We could we could do it's that. A good, it's a good little segment for Landon. But we were we were just about to ask you about your room and the uh, apparent so upgrade that happened. Let's talk me, about that. So they put me in in a room that was man. You know what? It wasn't a bad room. I will say it was not a bad room. Um, the window sucked. The lid. I mean, it was about a three by three circular like bubble window. And it wasn't great. Um, and I can't imagine with the waves and the rocking how I, w- how I would have been. Uh, but then they, uh, they upgraded me the second day to this beautiful balcony room. And uh, it was awesome. It was, I was very, very thankful for that. It was right off the elevators too, which was nice. It was, it was absolutely perfect for me. And a couple of days I got to just sit out, uh, wake up and just sit on the balcony and think about my thoughts. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was very, very good. It was, it was an awesome, awesome, uh, very thankful for that upgrade. It was Go and check out the, uh, the video diary. You can see, uh, that view in that balcony is, it it's quite a sight. It, uh, yeah. So I, I, you, you then you can watch yeah you can watch like the upgrade of the the old room to mine and then because mark sterling did not get the upgrade he was on the same level as i originally was Ooh. he did not get the upgrade they obviously knew i worked six wrestlemanias and wrestled the great Kali on survivor series uh they upgraded little dill so man oh man let's talk about the uh the flip side of that though um what was it like at night? There's a little spot in the in the video I did not diary. Like this, George, <laughs> not not so keen about being on the water at night. Justin Michael told me on Twitch. He goes, "Your number one fear is the dark. You have not, you've not witnessed true darkness until you're on a cruise and late at night, and you look out and there's just darkness." No. And I go, "What? I didn't believe him." And the first night we're at that that welcome party and I look out and I was like shaking. I, I didn't. It was true. There was one light and man, it had to have been a hundred miles away, it seemed. But it was from another ship. And Matt noticed how scared I was and he did not care. He tried. He tried faking like he was going to toss me overboard. I. I didn't at that point. I didn't care about going overboard. I was cared about like going into the darkness. Like you're just gone. If you fall overboard on a cruise ship, you're done. You are done. 
Very, that's what made me realize if you fall over on a cruise ship at night, you're, you're not being saved. And that was scary to me. Um, the, it was so, so dark, so dark. I, I, I slept with my bathroom light on like always, but the door wasn't even shut. I left the door wide open with the bathroom light on. I don't think you're alone in that. It I don't think that's dark. like a like a, a crazy outrageous story. Now it's time to get into the uh the good the part not here. So dark let's, things. The bright let's lights. Talk about the bright lights, the casinos on the cruise ship. Guys, this was, if I wasn't eating prosciutto, I was in the casino. Legitimately. There was so many times where Brian would just text me, "Where are you?" and I would just put bright lights. Because and how the bright how it started as bright lights what <laughs> pasta cough <clears throat> there it is uh so we're taking we're walking me brian and liz are walking the boat and i knew there was a casino on the boat i just didn't know where it was and i definitely didn't know it was like the main center point between a lot of things that we would do like go out to the pool area it was in between that and our our uh, restaurants or in between that and the stage, the theater room and the other bar. But it was like, so we're walking and I we get to the casino and Brian tells it, he goes, you just like froze. And you and Liz goes, yeah, you froze and you just had like a Cheshire cat grin because you were so happy. This is the first time we saw true happiness from you this whole trip. And it was like, oh, man, I just saw the casino. and. I, I, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Uh, I fell in Joe love Pasta with the blackjack guy. I fell in love with the blackjack table. I never play blackjack, but I was up the first night. I was up a good amount. And then day two, night two, day three, night three, day four, night four came and I was down a lot. Uh, but I would just like the first night. Everyone was out at the bars or stuff, and I was Hawkins texted me, "Hey, where are you?" And I would just put the bright lights got me. The bright lights got me, and so it just turned into bright lights. Um, which you could find a sweet bright lights design on Pro Wrestling Tees. Uh, I instantly came up with the idea and shot it to TTD, and he made it happen. Um, but man, it's uh, it, it's it was just fun and. Like this, it was the same five or six dealers for every blackjack table and roulette and that kind of thing. So we became like for the week, like buddies and just giving them shit back and forth. And it was, it was a really, really good time. That's um, awesome. And then the night where we couldn't, so we were supposed to get off the boat the third day and night, but because of the wind and the weather, we couldn't. So it was like this huge hangout in the casino that night. So it was packed. So that was like where the party where the party was that night. And I was in the middle of it. I spent <laughs> so much time in the casino. I bet I spent at least six hours a day in the casino. Damn. There was a night where I it was 250 at night or in the morning. And I was like, oh, it's like midnight. I look at my phone and it says 250. I go, oh, there's no, no clocks in casinos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was time to go. End of the story. Did you end up or down? I ended way down. Uh, I I was up four hundred dollars the first night, and then I was down that four hundred plus another four hundred the next day, uh, and then another five hundred the day after, and then another five hundred the next day. Ooh, I was way down. Ooh. That's rough. I was way down. That's. Damn, the bright lights will get you every time. The bright lights got me. But it, uh, damn, damn, damn. You know what? I I gave myself a five hundred dollar limit a day. That was my limit, and and that's that's what I stuck to. All right, I think that's fine. You listen. You know your 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 means and your limits and what you can handle. So you're you're the only one that's able to set those uh, boundaries for yourself. But uh, with that, Dylan, any closing thoughts on the Jericho cruise before we move over uh, to the hot take of the week? In, in general, guys, if you're the, the next year's Jericho cruise is already very, very close to selling out. 
Uh, it's yep. the end of January next year. So if you're able to go, you should take the opportunity to go. Otherwise, just any cruise in general, you should take the opportunity to go on it. Um, I think not this year because we already have a plan, but next year we might push our Disney trip and uh, do the Disney cruise instead oh. for for the four or five days, whatever it is. And just that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think we might just do that. Um, it's it. I had so much fun. I really, really did. And you. I, I like I said, I felt like I would like even not being able to get off the boat for that day. Cause I wanted to swim with pigs. All I wanted to do was swim with pigs. And then we couldn't swim with pigs. And I was really let down. But it was still so much fun. Even on a boat straight for four days. You don't. It's literally like a traveling city. And everyone told me that. But it really, really is. You don't even realize you're on a boat unless you look out to the water. I did not know that swimming with pigs was a thing. Yeah, in the Bahamas. Like, that's new new information for me. Big tourist attraction. Swim with pigs. Guys, let me talk to you about our friends over at Manscaped, bringing you the absolute best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped makes precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. The performance package is the ultimate bundle in men's hygiene. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for our listeners. 20% off and free shipping worldwide when you use promo code SWOGGLE at manscaped.com. That's promo code SWOGGLE at manscaped.com for 20% off your order and free shipping. Wait, if my math is correct, 7 million men carry the two... That's 14 million balls. All right. Uh, all right, Dylan, this is the part where you usually yell at me to plug my shit, but now I'm going to flip the script on you. I'm going to tell you, Dylan, plug your shit. Guys, twitch.tv slash Dylan Postel every Monday, every other Wednesday over on Twitch. Uh, we did some Jackbox last week and a lot of Call of Duty lately. WWE 2K23 is coming out. Lan and I will be getting into my GM as soon as that's released. It's, it's, we're having fun over on Twitch. But tonight, as this comes out tonight, Wednesday night, Whatnot Wrestling Wednesday over on Whatnot. Got a huge, huge stream over on Whatnot. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Swoggle. Uh, get a, the podcast shirts. Get the brand new Bright Lights shirt. We've been rocking and rolling on new designs over there lately, and it's uh. What's yeah. that? Uh, what's that? Whatnot URL there, guys? You can go to swaggleauction.com tonight to join Dylan's whatnot stream, and uh, you can get yourself a ten dollar credit on whatnot to Bottom use off. on on Dylan's own auction when you go to swaggleauction.com. Uh, he won't plug the URL, so I will. Um, you put me in charge of too many things. You realize, George, you, you, oh, it's in the notes. I was just going to say, it's literally on the screen, Dylan. Look at your screen. <laughs> Bostikoff. Um, this is why you send me notes. I've realized this is why you send me notes. Oh man, it uh <laughs> Manscaped. Manscaped, you didn't put that podcast. in the notes. Yep, it's in bright yellow. Manscaped. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, stillimpostal.com. You can find links to literally everything I do, whether it be YouTube or Twitch or Twitter or Instagram or ACW or everything. DylanPostel.com. Uh yes. Yes. We uh it, it's it, we got a lot of things going on right now. It's it's the busiest I think we as a postal industry is the busiest we've ever been. I really, really think, but it's a lot it's having fun. We're having a ton of fun and it's just going to continue. Yeah, that's all I got. So George, plug your shit. Guys, in addition to this podcast, I also host another 
It is called the Game Marks Podcast. It is myself and former Create a Pro champion Johnny Clash on, on this podcast. He goes by that. He is a member of, of uh, the 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 Postal Industries family, if you will. And we break down a different wrestling video game each and every week. We would love if you checked us out. Of what's up, Dylan? <laughs> go, no, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Dylan. You would go ahead. Go ahead. Continue your plug. Oh, okay. Uh, so please make sure to check us out on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Uh, make sure to give us a five star review and rating on both Apple Podcasts and Spotify for not only this podcast, but also for Game Marks Pod. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe, ring the notification bell, leave a comment. George, did you did you see? Uh- I think it was on Twitch or was it? I don't remember what it was on where I talked about the people in postal industries. Oh, it was on last week's episode. <laughs> I brought up Johnny clash. Yeah. You were going to talk about how last episode on the podcast, you called him Birdo. Yeah. Did he talk about that? He know that? this. He- on the, yes, he knew about it. I told him as soon as we got off the podcast, I went, so we did a comparison of uh, Dylan comparing all the members of Postal Industries, and, uh, and he just his response was, oh, God, who did he make me? <laughs> and I went, he made you Birdo. And he went, I don't know who that is. And I went, that's because you I go, not a big Mario 2 guy? And he went, not really. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to you now, and you're going to do that signature sign off that you do so, so very, very well. And, uh, you know, send the people home happy. Dylan Postal, whenever you're ready. Guys, check out the Game Marks pod. I'm falling more and more in love with it each time I listen. I always text Johnny Clash, my friend John Caruso. Address will be in the description below. No, it won't. <laughs> I always ask him. What game this week? And then he tells me, and I go, never heard of that one. Guys, listen to the Game Marks pod. Bye. Hey guys, Magic Candle Company is the best way to bring your favorite vacation scents to your home. The smell of a tropical beach, dark water ride, a cruise ship, or even a water park. The Magic Candle Company is the best way to bring those nostalgic and iconic scents from your favorite vacation spot to your home. Visit magiccandlecompany.com and use code SWOGGLE to save 15% on your whole order and bring the magic home today.